Episode 8, The Fifth Laboratory. I don't know who you are, kid, but you sure figured out a lot just from looking at a transmutation circle. I'm just good like that. Who are you, pal? The one in charge of guarding this place from curious brats. For the moment, let's just say my name is number 48. Why does he sound like Sean Connery? <laughs> Try not to take it personally, boy. Personally. You're an alchemist, are you? Always fast. My, my, what's this? I'm gonna go out on a limb here and set your hollow inside. Oh, wow. Is he like Al? Is he a suit of armor? Yeah, it makes me sick to think there's more than one idiot in the world who came up with the brilliant idea of bonding a oh. disembodied soul to a suit of armor. I was about to say, what the heck? 48 is the number I was assigned when I was on death row. Back when I still had a living body, I was better known as Slicer. I get the feeling this guy's not all bad. Maybe it's the Sean Connery voice. Are they using condemned prisoners like you to make philosopher's stones here? Well, I can't tell you. It isn't my area. They simply recognize my skills, gave me this body, and made me their trusty guard dog. For some reason, I feel like he's lonely. Does that make sense? No? Okay. I have a blood seal. This is it right here. If you destroy this, the fight's yours. That's awfully considerate of you to show me your weak spot. Yeah. I like to give myself a little extra challenge during a fight now and then. Lonely and bored. Let's fight! Did you hear what I said? My dear little Alicia is about to turn three! Lieutenant Colonel Hughes, do you think this could wait? I'm at work. Oh, what a coincidence! I'm at work too! <laughs> you don't admit that. Is Major Armstrong still in charge of the boys' protective detail? He was, but a couple of his men have taken over now. <laughs> We've been played! I thought it was suspiciously quiet in here. <laughs> Major Armstrong's gonna take his shirt off again! <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. Oh, is it the, the piece that's, that Winry forgot, right? Nice. What a cute little monkey. Who are you calling Leto? <laughs> it's been too long since I've had prey that was worth hunting. He's having a great time. Is this companion of yours strong? Yes, he is. He isn't as strong as I am, though. <laughs> In that case, I don't need to worry. You see, we've been sparring partners a long time, and I've still never beaten him. Nice. Yeah, that's true. It does sort of seem like in the action scenes, Al, a lot of the time, is doing the big damage. Ed's more alchemy, Al's more brute strength. It's also cool to see Ed so relieved, realizing that even though he's about to die, that Al's gonna be fine. Damn it! Why can't you sit still for a second and let me cut you off, you big bucket of balls? <laughs> he's one too. I was wondering why they look like that. I don't see a seal. There's a bit of a story behind that. Would you like to hear? Do I have a choice? <laughs> it all starts with a man by the name of Barry. There was a butcher named Barry who loved his work. His favorite part was cutting up the meat into little tiny pieces. But one day, Barry Nothing found wrong that with cutting that. up beef and pork wasn't enough anymore. Here we go. <laughs> and began cutting up people instead. Oh, good, good. Night after night. And the world was happily rid of yet another evil man. At least, that's what everyone out there believes. Yes, that's right! He's standing in front of your very eyes! This must be weird for Al. Ah! I like that I've meat never heard of screen. You. I'm from Ouch. a little town in the east, so... Fine! But even if you don't know who I am, shouldn't you at least be a little scared? Shouldn't you be going, ah! Or what happened to your body? Or something? Ah! What happened <laughs> to your great. body? <laughs> That's amazing. Are you sure that you're not a puppet created and controlled by your so-called brother? <gasps> Were you ever even a real person to begin with? How can you ask? Something like that. What? I have memories. I remember who I was before. And who's to say those memories aren't made up? But Winry and Granny, 
they know me. Don't fall for it, Al. Silly boy. You were never alive to begin with. What the hell? This is bizarre. So at first glance, this is kind of ridiculous because you can say this to anybody. It's like, how do you know your memories are real? You don't. And in fact, I think a lot of our memories aren't real. Or at least memories contain a lot of inaccuracy because memories are sort of coded not for fact, but for, for message or for emotional significance. So there is an element of this just in life. It makes a little more sense for Al because he doesn't have a body. But because this is a show and a lot of things aren't accidental, I wonder what the significance of this is. I'm starting to worry about Al. I mean, this guy's probably just a psycho and it might be meaningless, but I'm wondering if there isn't some something else they're setting up with this. Then how do you know that you were really alive? Right, exactly. This area's off limits, don't move! Oh my... What the heck? I can't control myself! I kill, therefore I am! Okay, Descartes. Go out, do it now! What? That nice. was dirty! There's no such thing as dirty in a fight! Is that true? I'm not beaten yet. Damn. Impossible. Full metal Slicer. AKA 007. The Barry the Chopper. I don't like him as much. An independent head and body? That's a dirty trick! No, no. Weren't you the one who said there's no such thing as dirty in a fight? Are you ready? Round two's about to begin, short stuff. Good. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Ow. Did he just do the destruction thing? He reminded me of someone I don't like. And now I've done exactly what he did. Nice. Hurry up and destroy us. No, I'm not a murderer. With bodies like these, are we really even people? Ouch. That hurts for Al. Whether you have physical bodies or not. Yeah. Come on, what's the matter, little puppet? I told you I'm not a puppet! Oh no, he's getting in Al's head. You've got a blood seal too, right? Destroy it. Go ahead, break it yourself. If you die, you were a real boy all along, just like you want to believe. That makes no sense. I know that my brother is a human being. That means you guys are human too. My brother and I have been lying, stealing, cheating, and killing together for as long as we can remember. And now that we're in these pseudo-bodies, we're being treated like humans for the first time. For that boy, I'll give you a parting gift. I'll tell you who made the Philosopher's Stone and ordered us to guard this place. Oh, is that the, the woman? Damn, I kind of like this guy. Oh, well. This is our first meeting. Oh my, that was a close call. Such a troublesome boy. How did you find out about this place? Brother! 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 Oh. Quit your pathetic blubbering, you idiot! You are trying to kill one of our most important sacrifices. Why is this disappointing that they're dying? They're like five minute old characters. Kill Barry instead. Barry's a jerk. One thing that's sort of nagging at me in this episode is like, what are the questions being raised about what it means to be real, right? Like, there's a whole thing with Al and his supposedly false memories. And the fact that Barry says, I kill, therefore I am, that seems to be a, a joking reference to Descartes' I think, therefore I am. And I think the show can explore this in a, in a more literal way than exists in real life. But it's still an interesting thing to think about. There's the famous theory that we're all in a simulation and the thinking is like, there can be only one reality, but there can be an infinite number of simulations. So the likelihood of us being in a simulation appears to be very high. For me, it's sort of like, that would be kind of of a shock to figure out but it sort of doesn't really matter all that much because while i feel like there might be something close to an objective reality it's something we'll probably never really know and i feel like the experiences we have is enough of a reality in itself for our purposes like i feel like if i was in a simulation even knowing that after the initial shock i'd still be like okay i'm gonna be the best simulated person i can be you know i think value can be had even if we're not real i think it's the struggle of being a creature in the universe who thinks and who can rise to the challenge and try to be a good part of the universe consciously i think that is sort of where human value comes from or at least a part of it you could have messed up the entire oh, his hand that's brutal what would we have done then huh? What's her name? Envy? Oh my god, I just realized. Gluttony, Envy. Are there gonna be seven of them? Tell me who you people are. What plan are you talking about? Yeah, what's your plan? What is your big plan? The pipsqueak's raring to go. I think I made it angry. 
Don't call me Pipsqueak again. <laughs> oh no. Even now. Whoa now. You just kick her in the face? There's no need to fight here. Someone might get hurt, you know. Why does she sound like Marge Simpson? So come on! Uh, technical difficulties. Ah! Lucky me! <laughs> Damn, Ed's really getting beat up this episode. Always remember we allowed you to live. We can't have him poking around this place again. It's too dangerous. It'll have to go. What does it say? Something about redemption? I don't know. It's not English. You know, Al, there's something I've been wanting to tell you for a while. Oh no, is that what it was? What was Ed about to tell me? He said he'd been too afraid to say it before. What's the matter, little boy? You got something on your mind? <laughs> Shut up! You're wrong! <laughs> Just accept it. You'll feel better. That's confusion of making him weak. You're mine now, little puppet. I was wait waiting for them to show up. Stay right there, or the next one puts a hole in your head. Watch out for his throwing meat cleaver. What are you doing? Get away from there. But my brother is gonna help Ed. The yeah. Then why does Barry get to live and Slicer had to die? Got a little present for you. Brother! His life's not in danger, but he has lost a lot of blood, so you might want to get him to a hospital as soon as you can. But who are you? Lieutenant Ross, we need to go! Sergeant, help me with him! Uh, what happened to him? We'll talk later, and you should go too! What? He's gone. Wait, did you just say he? <sighs> it's such a comforting sound, the way it reverberates through your entire body. You Damn, keep it down, down in there, Kimberly. Oh, do excuse me. I was just recalling the Ishfallen War of Extermination, and it put me in such a good mood. Kimberly, is that the guy we saw the Ice Alchemist talk to in the first episode? And I could be wrong about this, but I think we also see him in the flashback for the Ishfallen Civil War. Are you sure you're not a puppet created by your so-called brother? I'm all here. Is he? I hope Ed's secret turns out to be something really mundane, like he had a sexy dream about Armstrong's muscles or something like that. Nice, it's a post credit scene. Rumor has it a promotion to Central for one Colonel Mustang isn't far off. Central, huh? Not bad at all. Climb that ladder. You need as many people on your side as you can get your hands on now, Colonel. Which means... Get yourself a white... <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel, stop making so many personal phone calls, okay? Oh, so sorry. Cute, I like that ending scene. So we have some really big questions raised in this episode. We have Ed and Al meeting people who seem to be the head villains of the show so far. We had Sean Connery for five seconds and then he died. I guess we have Barry on the loose, unfortunately. We have a looming secret, something Ed's not telling Al. I'll just have to wait and see where it goes. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon for episode nine.